Ladies and gentlemen, the following video is scheduled to be a two-part opinion piece. Making his way to the set now, weighing in at 180 pounds and wearing black and red with blue jeans, the Vacuuminator! Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone to the new Vacuuminator offices. So, uh, how y'all liking this place? Yeah, think it's neat? Think it's cool? Think it's pretty groovy? You better, because I spent a lot of time getting it just right. I made sure we had all the guys here, okay? I got Supergirl, I got Perceptor, I got Optimus Prime with sonic screwdrivers coming out of his head, I even got Stone Cold. S.H. Figure Arts Stone Cold. Stone Cold right there. There's all kinds of neat stuff in here, you know, I got that cool big Autobot symbol hanging on the wall over there, I got that green... Actually, how the hell did that green light get there? I don't remember ever buying it. Ah, whatever, let's just get to the point. So, in my relatively short time on YouTube, I've made it no secret that I don't really care for the first season of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. My main problems being that, outside of one or two episodes, it's a show with sloppy writing, less than stellar acting, and awful footage blending due to the fact that the West was still figuring out how to make Toku at the time. And for the most part, that's understandable. Until very recently, few shows started off as the best thing they possibly could be. All you have to do is look at some early Doctor Who or Star Trek The Next Generation to see that. But believe it or not, this video actually isn't about me ragging on MMPR, it's about me defending it. And that's because of a somewhat recent development with these characters, the Boom Studios comics. Since making my contrarian opinions on Season 1 known, I have discovered that there actually is a contingent of the fandom that agrees with me thanks to the Boom stuff bringing them out of the woodwork to talk about how much better it is. However, I've also discovered another thing about the Power Rangers fandom through those comics. No one really got the original five until Kyle Higgins and Ryan Parrott, the guys who have been writing most of the Boom comics, came along and spelled it out for them. Since the main book got past its first arc, I've seen nothing but praise from people saying that the comics are finally breathing life into the original five and making them interesting. And while I am enjoying the books a lot myself, I think there's a serious problem with making that statement. Mainly that Higgins and Parrot aren't doing as much as it would imply. MMPR's greatest strength was always in its main characters. For the most part, they all had good base outlines behind them, and in my mind, that's a big part of what made MMPR such a huge phenomenon in the 90s. Allow me to illustrate that by looking at one of the main five, Jason, the first Red Ranger. He's a character who is wholly dedicated to bettering himself and others, almost to a ludicrous degree at times. This for sure makes him a good Red Ranger, but what makes him a good character in his own right is what we can read into it. Jason is rarely seen on his own. He's almost always with one of the other Rangers or another character doing something, whether it be teaching his karate class, helping out with some sort of community or public works project, working out, competing in a tournament or contest of some kind, doing schoolwork, or just going about his business of saving the world as a ranger. Now, a lot of people like to rag on this aspect of MMPR, saying that it's unrealistic and there's no way a normal teenager could be involved with this much stuff, and to that I say, yeah, no shit, it's not supposed to be realistic. It's supposed to be an ideal a role model and an example for anyone watching the show of what they should strive to be. You have to remember, there wasn't really an adult fandom for PR at the time, so the show was pretty much exclusively crafted with young children in mind, and that's why Jason works. Because just as any little kid reading a Superman comic can look up to him and say, 
wow, I want to be as good of a person as Superman when I grow up, any little kid watching MMPR in the 90s could look up to Jason and say, I want to be as good of a person as him when I'm in high school. But there's a key phrase buried in that which perfectly shows the biggest problem with Season 1. Read into it. Back in Season 1, there really wasn't such a thing as character development. A character would be introduced, given a trait or two, and then the show really wouldn't do anything with them beyond that. Because in those early days, the writers were trying to get the format down by sticking to very simple stories that relied a lot on Sentai footage and having the Rangers learn basic lessons of the week. But they clearly wanted to do more than that after Season 1, because at the start of Season 2, they were introducing new elements to the characters like family members and potential love interests. But sadly, a lot of that had to be dropped when the whole Peace Conference fiasco went down. Which is what makes the advent of the Boom comics so great. With them, we've seen these characters finally expounded on in stories like A Week in the Life, from the first annual where Higgins shows just how insane it would be to try and live Jason's life, but because of his own resolve, he still does it week in and week out. And thanks to the fact that we don't have to worry about losing the actors with this version, Higgins, Parrot, and any other writers can continue to play around with and explore these characters for as long as they want. Like in Parrot's book, Go Go Power Rangers, which is about the early days of the team before a certain green and white menace that I'd rather not talk about today shows up. The thing that most grabbed me about this book's first arc was Jason and Trini, who spent a lot of time training together and trying to figure out the full extent of their powers. Though, sadly, the main title story is still focused on that green and white menace, which is a shame because I'd love to see Higgins give more characters the center stage. In particular, I'd love to see more done with Zack, as he is a character I've always thought had a lot of potential, because I see him as being the kind of person who puts his all into making sure his friends are always happy because of how much they mean to him. And when given the chance, he tries to do that for other people, as exemplified by his attempts to woo Angela. There's a lot of room for them to work with Trini, too. She barely ever got anything to do in the show besides translate Billy's technobabble and be Kimberly's best friend. Though she has had her moments so far, like that stuff with Jason and Go Go and a pretty fun one-off story in the second annual, I'd love to see some other writers really try and get into what makes the character tick. The comics have done a great job with Billy, though. First taking some moments to explore his feelings of inadequacy and how much being a ranger means to him in the main book, and then showing him overcome them by going to and then escaping the alternate dimension him and Green and White Menace get trapped in, and then showing the root of those feelings in the pages of Go Go. He definitely seems to be the one Higgins and Parrot have the best grasp of, which is to be expected given that he stayed in the show longer than any other member of the original five. Really, the only one of the main five I don't think needs that much work from them is Kimberly, since she was so well developed over the course of the latter two seasons of MMPR. Showing her dealing with her parents being divorced and her mom then remarrying and moving away, and even growing her to the point where she leaves the team because she's going to pursue a shot at being an Olympic gymnast. Suffering that for her is just as fulfilling as being a ranger. But that's not to say I wouldn't be open to them doing something with her outside of her, shall we say, underwhelming miniseries. The crux of my point here is that the original season of the show fell flat for me because it lacked interesting development of its characters, who all had huge potential. The comic, on the other hand, still has a lot of room to bring what people like myself have always thought about these characters to the public consciousness. Which could be great, so long as you people stop acting like it wasn't there in the first place. And don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to be disrespectful to Kyle Higgins, Ryan Parrott, the other Boom writers, or any of the writers of MMPR Season 1 by saying they don't deserve all the credit they get. They've all done good work, and I don't deny that, I'm just calling this thing as I see it. It's a big misconception among all the people consuming the media those writers created. And in doing that, I'm hoping I can make everyone see it a little more from my point of view. Which, at the end of the day, is all these videos are really about.
Whoa, 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 wait, what the fuck? And his opponent, weighing in at 240 pounds and wearing green, red, white, gold, and black, is Ranger Team!